Bonjour. You may have heard that Absinthe is dead. However, it is not. It is but undead. Hi, I'm Taylor Smell. <laughs> and I can't do a French accent. And I'm Liz June, and I'm dropping it right now. Look, we've got gourds! Oh, okay. We do. We have gourds, and we also have absinthe. We're talking about absinthe Hopefully, today. Hopefully you listen to the podcast first, or you might be confused as to why we are zombie French painters. Mm, yeah. Or maybe you're just like, that's that reads, that's fine. Yes, this is normal. I want to know about the traditional way of drinking absinthe. Well, I will show you. I know um, that we're wearing mustaches, but mine kind of look like whiskers, I think. <laughs> That's fine. You're a French cat. I'm a dead French cat. I no. don't know. Look, okay. Anyway, so there is... Le Mio. Le Mio. Le Mio. Le Mio. Zombie cats. Zombie cats. <laughs> We do look slightly less terrifying than the, the new live action cats movie. Yeah. Slightly less. I wasn't sure exactly where you were going there, but yes, that is true. So I'm gonna, so the first way is the traditional, it's the French method. Um, so when you're preparing absinthe, um, the idea behind it is basically you want to release the uh, wormwood oil uh, into a suspension. So you slowly add water and it causes, it causes what's called the louche effect. Louche? Louche. Which is basically, it gets cloudy. Um, the water and oil kind of interact and it creates a cloudy substance. Um, supposedly this is what unlocks the mystical properties of absinthe. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. You're just adding water to it. Uh, yeah. But, all right, so the first way we're gonna do it is pretty easy. I have my Perno Absence, which is the one we talked about in the show, the original distillery that made it. Still around. So I'm just gonna put about an ounce and a half, and you're gonna do like a two to one or three to one ratio of absinthe to water, kind of depending on what your preference is, but you definitely want more water than absinthe in your final product. And then uh, you're gonna need, ideally, one of these slotted spoons. Yeah, you can find these online. They're cheap. I'm gonna put that over my glass with my absinthe in it. I'm going to put a sugar cube on top. Oh. And then I'm just going to slowly pour cold water over that until it starts to dissolve. Um, you might have seen the like, like the little setups that like slowly drip an absinthe drip that slowly drips water over your sugar cube. Like cool bars that do that. This is basically just your mimicking this by hand. Yeah. Here we go. I didn't realize how uh, stable those things are. Yeah, these are pretty stable. They don't get there. There it goes, 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 it goes. Oh, it's starting there to break go. down. There we oh. go. Yep. All right, so now that my sugar cube's broken down, I'm gonna stir up my drink a little bit. As you can see, it's got cloudy. Mm. Went from like a clear, slightly green liquid to now it's like a nice minty color. And there we go. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Well, that tastes like licorice. That as it should. That's what it tastes like. That's what absinthe tastes like. That's tasty, and I like this. But you know what would be better? If it was set on fire. Ooh, I'm gonna add, add a little pizzazz. It's a little, little showmanship. A little you know? je ne sais quoi. You know, that's... Oh, that was French, right? Was it? Yes. Okay. Ha! Huh. It's like when you're searching for that. Uh, okay. Oh, what is that hmm. extra special thing? That certain je ne sais quoi. So you you say that nice. I couldn't say that. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the second way. I'm gonna need this glass again though. So I'm gonna just get rid of this somehow. <laughs> like magic. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the old absinthe bank. I am reanimated by absinthe. Absinthe zombies brought back to life with the spirit. Uh, hey, time to burn things. <gasps> So the second way is very similar, except for do that same amount of absinthe. Then I'm gonna take a sugar cube nice. and I'm gonna dip it in my absinthe. Oh, that's a little different. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do is first be careful because these fingers are covered in absinthe now, so I'm not gonna use this hand. I've learned that the, the hard way. Once you cover your hand in flammable alcohol, don't use it for anything. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna set this sugar cube on fire. I'm gonna let it caramelize for a few seconds. This is overproof absinthe, it's like 68%. So it's gonna burn a little bit. When it starts to caramelize, I'm gonna drop it in the absinthe 
and then add water to put out the fire. I'm telling you this now because trying to explain it and do it at the same time typically results in big fires. It happens very uh, fast. Yes. <laughs> so. Ooh, that's pretty. Starting to break down, starting to caramelize. Probably can't you see can the see fire it. on it. It's on fire. Interesting, right? it's on fire. All right, okay. It's so on now, fire. Now the, the alcohol is on fire. It's burning one of those confusing blue flames that you have to be sober enough to make sure that you're aware of. Yeah, because you can uh, barely see it. Yep. So now I'm gonna ooh, try to extinguish it with this water. It's yeah. still on fire. It's on, it's gonna, yeah, okay. Huh. And I'm just gonna kind of break up my caramelized sugar cube in there. Give it a little stir. Cute. Now, obviously you're wondering why, what's the difference between setting it on fire or not. You are caramelizing the sugar, so you're getting a different flavor off your sugar. As far as letting the absinthe burn slightly, if you're doing anything, you're burning off a little bit of the alcohol. Mm, it'll, be, it'll be less potent. It won't be quite as high proof. And now inhaling the fumes of burning alcohol is a trip in its own. <laughs> right. But I'd say in this case, don't put your face in there. No, definitely not. And oh, anytime you're letting you're lighting alcohol on fire, please be careful. I want set a bar on fire. Really? I, I, are you an arsonist? I was once, uh, I'm not going to even describe this shot because I think it's, it's, it's not responsible to tell you how to do the shot. It's not a good idea. But there's a shot that I once was introduced to by one of my bartender friends, uh, that it involves a flaming shot of absinthe. Long story short, I knocked the shot over and I set the bar top <laughs> on fire. That was quickly put uh, out. It was quickly put out. Like she kind of, I think she knows me. And so she was expecting that. So she just had a wet towel on the ready and like slapped it out. I was like, no more of those for you. It's like, yeah, I agree. Um, that's, uh, and that's how yeah. we know you're done. Yeah, but uh, though, like anytime you're setting anything on fire, be careful. It, alcohol is flammable. I've also, I also once saw a bartender burn her eyebrows off, <gasps> trying to like shoot a fireball, which is really cool. Ooh. But so you shoot alcohol out of your mouth and like, make a cool fireball. She did it a few times unsuccessfully, and by the time she did it successfully, she gathered up so much alcohol on like her mouth and her hands, and it just created a whole thing. You know, cool trick, eyebrows, weigh it. Be careful with fire. Anyway, here you go. Oh, the flaming absinthe. <clears throat> How's that taste? Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah, you I like, like that. that. Caramelized notes, actually. Yeah, I like how it interacts with the licorice flavor with this. Yeah. A little roasty toasty. Roasty toasty. Roasty toasty. Oh, well, okay, well, let's put this to the side. And now let's do something else with absinthe. Let's make a cocktail. Yes, so for, uh, if you listened to the episode, we talked about the absinthe murders and the bevy of drinks that the murderer consumed that day, uh, a small portion of which was absinthe. So, in, I guess in mockery of this horrible asshole who blames absinthe for his murder, um, we've made a drink that involved everything else that he drank that day with a little bit of absinthe in it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start with a little bit of bitters. Angostura works if that's what you can find. These happen to be chocolate bitters. They'll work with the flavor palette a little more, but you just want a little bit of a bitter agent in there. Now for his absinthe quotient, we're just gonna do a half ounce of our Pernod. And then we're gonna do an ounce of, so this is a, con a cold brew concentrate. It's just an overbrewed coffee. You could buy this in the store, it's readily available. If you don't have it in your store, uh, it could not be easier to make. Take your standard cold brew recipe and either cut the water in half or double up on the coffee grounds. You're just making a two to one concentrate. And then we're gonna do three fourths an ounce of French sweet vermouth. He drank a lot of wine that day. Vermouth is based in wine and it's French, so I think it reads. And then seeing as how he had so much cognac and brandy, we're gonna do an ounce and a half of cognac. Glug, 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 glug. All right, let's throw some ice in that and stir <clears throat> it up. I'm feeling a little absent-minded right now. Are you? Okay. Yep. <laughs> yes, it was. Maybe I can't feel that the glass is gonna hold because of my cold, oh, undead hands. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I didn't find it. So, <laughs> yeah, you already seen this, it's here. I cut that for you. <laughs> yes, you did. I was gonna pretend to cut it, but. I'd like to help. All right, thank you. I'm a helpful zombie. <laughs> Brains, but right. also friendship. Friendship, try to get all that on that rim. I'm just gonna bloop it in there, right? 
bloop it, yeah. Bloop, good old bloop. That was a grapefruit peel. If you're wondering what that gigantic orange is. Yeah. Bartend enough and like weird flavor, like letters start to form and it's just kind of one of those like coffee, grapefruit, like spice, mm. chocolate, absinthe. They all taste nice together. So why don't you try it? All right, here we go. Hopefully this will be an eye opener because I'm dead. <laughs> you need a little bit of this to revive you. Oh, that's a pick me up. <laughs> oh, look at that. I actually really like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does that get a, a wee wee? A wee wee. A wee wee? So we're gonna call this cocktail Absinthe Madness. Because that's not a thing and this only has a little bit of absinthe in it. Yep. Looking at you and your shitty court defense. That was, that was really fucked up. But I like that you really cared about not naming the cocktail after the... Yeah, the we're not even gonna say his name. No. I said it in the podcast, you know who it is. That's, yeah, that's facts, but yeah. it doesn't deserve to be glorified. The bigger point is, that was a shitty defense. Absence was not to blame. Right. And this is about the same proportions of, like, what he had that day. Yeah. So, happy, fuck you, murder guy. <laughs> fuck you, murder guy. Happy spooky season. Happy spooky season. So, uh, this is the first of our spooky season of Neat the Booze cast. Yeah, so we're gonna bring you lots of spooky themed drinks and spirits and hopefully rouse your spirits. And costumes. And which... costumes, yes. I like this cocktail. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. I love this contour. Yes. I just wanna keep doing undead contour. I feel like I look like a, like a hot young undead Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> That's for my goal in life. Ah! All right. Well, you know what? Um, thanks for thanks for tuning in to our booze cast. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Yes. And <laughs> give, us, give us a little comment and shit. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these. We're gonna do some more. Um, if you want to see even more, join our Patreon for exclusive content. You should join the Patreon because I'm not giving you just a pumpkin spice recipe. I'm not giving you just a coffee liqueur recipe. I'm giving you a pumpkin spice coffee liqueur recipe. That sounds to die for. You're gonna want it. You're gonna want to see the video and you're gonna want to make it for all your friends. Yeah, and all it takes is joining our Patreon. That yeah. means that you could give us one dollar. One dollar for an uh, instructional video with my personal recipe. That, it, that knowledge is really priceless. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and please share this. Thanks for uh, coming up with our theme music, Absurdist. Thank you, big thank you to Absurdist. Hey, ghoul cool friends. Hey, ghoul cool friends. See you next time. I've been Taylor Sparrow. And I've been Liz June. And this has been Neat. Neat. Bye. Ooh, spooky Halloween. I feel like we made no brain jokes.